It's a place for you and me. Ready for discovery? The deeper you dig, the more you will find. Cause that's how it works on Mystery Island. That's the deal. Stay on track with the treasure reserves if you follow the map. God is faithful. God is strong. I can see on his love all the day long. God is powerful, holy and true. I'm ready for mystery. How about you?
I think that's the first time in Mount Gilead history we've had a rap solo for special music, but I dig it. it made me ready for Vacation Bible School. We got that coming up this week. Uh, that is going to be spectacular. We've got a bunch of kids registered. We've got adults ready. Actually, today a lot of adults will be setting up the stage and things like that, which uh, before I forget to say this, uh, I need a couple of uh, strong backs and weak minds right after the service. Uh, we have to actually relocate the piano from where it is up uh, on the stage just a little bit. So it'll take just a second, and if we get five or six, seven guys on it, it's not a big deal. But uh, uh, when you try to do it with two or three guys, it's, uh, it's a challenge. So uh, uh, if we could get some guys to help with that right after the service. But Vacation Bible School is this week. It'll be 8.30. Uh, to noon every day. Uh, you can register your child online. If you have not done that yet, no problem. Just show up tomorrow. We'll get them registered here. And uh, we're going to have a great, great week. At the end of the week on June the 13th, we've actually got a Vacation Bible School family night. Uh, we'll have a program here in the worship center at 5 o'clock. Kids need to be here at 445. And uh, then we're going to have uh, ice cream sundaes in the fellowship hall, which will be totally awesome, uh, but tonight to kick off our Vacation Bible School from 5 to 7, we've got uh, uh, a family uh, party and VBS kickoff planned. It'll be uh, up here uh, by the deli uh, on, on the top of the parking lot up here. We've got water slides. I, I'll be cooking these awesome hot dogs, the best hot dogs you've ever had, so uh, there'll be plenty of those. And uh, Deborah and I have located a snowball machine. We're going to have like snowballs and all that good stuff. So uh, that'll be fun tonight from 5 to 7. Word of precaution, if, you, if you're if you like me and kind of top heavy and your legs get tired, you may want to bring a little chair, a fold out chair or something like that to just kind of park it for a while. But uh, we're going to have some picnic tables set up there uh, and things like that. But please plan to come tonight, 5 to 7, no charge. We just want to get together, kick off vacation Bible school, have a great time. Uh, together, okay? Uh, we've got a couple of other things coming on uh, and coming up at church that I want you guys to be aware of. Uh, precept upon precept is a new study uh, that will begin July the 7th. That cost is $18. You can read more about that. You can contact Miss Liz Martin. Her information is right there in the worship guide. Also, uh, churchwide Water World Fun Night, we've got that planned for June the 27th. That's from 515 to 715. So we have rented out Waterworld. It'll be just Mount Gilead friends and family. Okay, so anybody that you want to invite, you want to, this is a great way to invite your neighbor to church. Uh, maybe uh, 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 you have a friend uh, that you want to start coming to church. This is a great way to invite them. Uh, they, the cost is $5 a person. You can register online or on the church app, okay? Uh, but this is a great way to invite folks to our church and uh, a great way for them to get to know uh, 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 the folks at Mount Gilead. But we've got that planned, and that'll be June the 27th. Uh, Nolan has planned an awesome trip to the Georgia Aquarium. Uh, have y'all ever been to the aquarium? I'm trying not to chase a rabbit. You know when you walk under the tunnel and like the big whale goes over you? Okay, they'll be spending the night right there. Okay, so they'll be camping out and uh, the beluga whales will be beluga over them all night long. So uh, it is a great cost for what you're getting for this trip. Uh, it is a great cost. So it's about $110, but uh, a lot's included with that. So uh, if you're interested, children, you need to talk with your parents. Or if you really want to go, hit up grandma and grandpa because they cannot say no, right? So you hit them up and go to that, okay? Uh, and then the ladies' life groups are getting ready to kick off in August. We'll have men groups as well, but uh, the ladies' sign-up is already online, so ladies, you can jump on that when you want to, okay? Let's pray. It's great to see you guys. great to be in the worship center, and let's thank God for his mercy and grace in our life. And we're here to worship him and honor him, okay, because he has done so much for us. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we come before you now and we bow our heads, we bow our hearts, and God, we want to say that in this moment that we need you in our lives. Uh, we may be here for the first time, we may be here just out of what we call habit, because this is what we do on Sunday mornings, but regardless of, of why we're here or how we got here, Lord, I pray that you are glorified and honored in these moments. God, I pray that you speak to us, that you encourage us, that you mold us into the image of your loving son this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Josh. 
Amen. Well, let's stand in this place together as we sing to God be the glory for all he has done.
took my sin. He took my sin and my sorrow. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. One day, when the wind of ransom in glory.
You may be seated. Amen. Hey, this is the day we've been waiting for for a long time. We've been through a journey this season. Is Lisa? I'm sorry, I haven't seen Lisa a long time. Uh, this is the day we've been waiting for. This is the day that we can rejoice. Now, of course, um, wherever we are worshiping, we are the church of God. We are the church when we are in the highways and the byways and the marketplace, when we're the church scattered. And we're the church gathered wherever we happen to be gathered to worship. But there is something very special about worshiping in the place that we have set aside as a place that we do business with God, as a place that we rejoice in Him. And uh, that's this place. And because of the pandemic, we've been removed from this place for quite some time. And so we tried to plan a very special worship service around being able to be here. I heard some, actually two different people say, it is good to be back home, to use the word home. And that's really what we're going to talk about this morning, to be the family of God. When we're gathered together, we are, we're home with each other. Um, our ushers are coming now. This is something we've not done in uh, about a year and a half, and that's take an offering. But as I said, when we got back into the worship center, we're going to take an offering. Why? Because we're Baptists, and that's what we do, right? That's, uh, that's part of it. No, seriously. Worship, a big part of worship is giving. Of course, giving of tithes and offerings, but also giving of our lives. So we want that to be a part of it as well. And, and as we continue in worship, one of the segments that we're going to put in our uh, worship as we move forward is a, a verse reading uh, of a verse that's connected to the larger passage and uh, message of the day. And so I want us to read verses Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And then um, we're going to have a prayer over our offering. And then we'll enjoy the worship and giving. Matthew 11, let's stand as we honor the reading of God's word. It's always important. Matthew 11, Jesus proclaims, Verse 28 and following, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Brother John, would you come lead us in prayer? It is great to be back in this house of worship today. It's good to see everyone here. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings, for your love and mercy and grace. We thank you for the opportunity to be back in this house of worship today, and we praise you. I thank you, Father, for each one here today, and I pray you would bless each of us as we seek you, as we seek to hear a word from you. Father, we thank you for all that you have given us, all that you've blessed us with. We pray now for these tithes and offerings as we receive them. Bless each one that gives this morning, Father. Bless all that is given. And all for your glory and your kingdom, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. As the choir dismisses, I invite you to take your copy of God's Word open to Luke 22. Today is a very special service for us as we're back in our worship center and we wanted to um, receive the Lord's Supper as a way of commemorating God's faithfulness through this past year and a half and uh, of course commemorating his faithfulness to us all the years of our life through his life, death, and, and resurrection. And so we're going to be receiving the Lord's Supper at the end of, of the service. And if you're a guest with us today, thank you so very much for being here. Uh, we invite you to join with us in the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you are a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, and what that means is, is you recognize that that um, outside of Christ that we are sinners and we're separated from God and we need uh, a savior we need one to redeem us from our sin and to and Christ has come to do that he lived a perfect life for us he went to the cross he died in our place he rose again overcoming sin hell death and the grave and now he is coming again to to receive us to himself one of these days and and all that's recognized in the symbol that he gave us in the Passover that the church celebrates in the Lord's Supper. Now we're going to use uh, these packets that we've used a few times now uh, over the last um, last number of months, these prepackaged ones, so I want to take just a moment to show you how these work because they're a bit different. Uh, we're going to start by eating the bread that's on top and there is a little bitty plastic clear divider. You'll peel that off first We'll partake the bread and then the larger silver divider. You'll peel that off uh, to partake of the juice. And we recognize this ordinance as a very special symbol. Recognize what, recognizing what Christ has accomplished for us as we think about who we are in Christ. What we have in Christ and the fact that he's coming again. I want us to start thinking about the importance of the table. So we think about coming to the table in Luke chapter 22. I want us to read verses 14 and 15. Let's stand to honor the reading of God's word. And then following this, I want us to pray. I'm going to get on my knees and ask for God's blessing over this time together, this word. And I invite you to join me as the Lord gives you grace. We're in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 and 15 says this. <clears throat> and when the hour came... He, that being Jesus, reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Would you pray with me? Father, you have brought us through much, and daily are bringing us through much. Father, as we think about the work of Christ Jesus as it is reflected in the Lord's Supper, Father, I pray now that we would just bask in that grace and we would come to relish in the goodness and the mercy of God. Thank you for bringing us to the table this morning. Lord, I ask for grace as I preach that you might be glorified and your people might be edified through your word. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, I want you to kind of pretend with me this morning. It's Thanksgiving morning. 12 o'clock is approaching. What are you doing? Well, maybe if you're like one of us guys, you're, you're watching football. That's always a fun thing to do. If you're uh, a child here, maybe you're watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade, if that's a thing that we really do anymore. Or maybe you're outside playing. That's something we would like our children to do. Probably you're on your iPad or your cell phone or, so, or something uh, like that. Uh, but I know in my house, when, we, uh, when I was growing up, we always spent Thanksgiving over at my grandmother's house. And if you were a lady in our family... Around that time that morning, you were cooking. And boy, we couldn't wait to get that call. You know that call? All right, it's ready. Come to the table. Because you knew it was going to be on the table now. 
I mean, the table was going to be laid out with a buffet fit for a king. I mean, he's going to have turkey and ham and, and stuffing and green beans and butter beans and collards. and Oh, and then you're going to have cornbread and, you know, and a number of casseroles. And quite frankly, you don't know what to call them, but they are delicious, right? And then there's the dessert table. Oh, the dessert table. You know, pound cake and blueberry uh, pie, blueberry pie. Dear Jesus, thank the Lord for blueberry pie. And you, you know what I'm, I mean, that's, that, that's what you're looking forward to. That's what you're anticipating, that call. Because you know that that call to come to the table is going to be a call that has a blessing tied to it, right? You're going to get to the table and you're going to be blessed. Well, I want us to think about the call of the Lord Jesus Christ to himself. As a call to blessing. Uh, We read Matthew 11 verse 28 a little while ago where Jesus makes this call out to the world. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. In Jesus we find salvation. We find peace. We find hope. We find eternal life. We find rest. And what we're thinking about today is that when we come to Jesus it's actually like joining a family family of God. So in a real way, responding to the call to Christ is responding to the call to come to the table, the table where the family gathers and receives his blessing. So I want us to think about this call to come. First of all, this call to come to the table of the Lord is a call to come personally. It's an invitation, but it's also a command, come And if you come to the table of the Lord, in some ways I want to think about parallel like going to your grandmother's table, going to your mamaw's table on Thanksgiving morning. It's that call to to, to come for blessing, but it's also with it an expectation that you are going to bring to the table at least three things. So the call to come to the table, whether it's coming to the grandma's table or coming to the Lord's table, you're going to have to bring three things. First is clean hands, second a good appetite, and third, plenty of time. And so I want us to think about that in terms of approaching the Lord's table. We come first of all, we need clean hands. Now I'll tell you one thing you didn't do on Thanksgiving morning at my mama's table. You didn't show up with dirty hands. You didn't go outside and play in the mud and get all messy and all dirty and all filthy. And my mama would say nasty. Boy, you nasty. But anyway, um, you show up at the table like that with, with, with unclean hands. And boy, she would call you on it. You better get away from my table. You better go clean your hands. Go wash your hands. Boy, what is wrong with you? And in the same way, we should never presume upon the Lord to approach his table without having clean hands. What are clean hands before the Lord? Well, it means you come to the table having dealt with God, having confessed our sin, having found forgiveness in in the Lord, having gotten uh, right with God and restoration with Him. It's this heartbeat of repentance and a lifestyle of repentance that was at the very heartbeat of Jesus' message as as He came preaching. Uh, Mark chapter 1, 14 and 15, it says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. And what was that gospel of God? It says, in saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the kingdom is here, it's now, it's right here, as close as your hand. Now what should we do? Repent and believe the gospel. So it's Completely necessary as we approach the table of God to approach repenting and turning from sin. Uh, that, that call to repent, it is an imperative, it's a command. You must repent. However, it's also, in the language of the New Testament, it's, it's interesting, the, the form that it's used, the idea is not that you repent once and then, well, that, that's fine. But yes, you repent. And in repentance and finding salvation in the Lord, yes, you are forgiven, completely forgiven, restored with God forevermore, given eternal life. But then God calls us to live a life of repentance. It's a form of calling us to to repent, keep repenting, live a lifestyle of repentance because God calls his family to live a life of holiness, a life where we're restored to God, where... um, 
where we're welcome to sit right by the holy. And therefore, since we're made in the image of God, we're restored in the image of Christ and His holiness, we want our, our lives to reflect our King and reflect His expectations of those at the table. That's our goal, to please God. We, we would never want to live lives that go against the very nature of who our God is. I mean, Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? The fact is, our sin is forgiven. Praise the Lord. If you're a believer here today in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've confessed your sin, you put your faith in Christ, you're forgiven. You have eternal life. Now, some would push back on that. Well, if that's the case, why don't you just go and sin all you want if, if, the sin, if grace is just going to abound? Well, thank goodness, grace abounds over our sin. But I'll tell you this. Our sin should grieve our hearts because it grieves the heart of God. And so that's why Paul says, are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin live it any longer? That's the heart that we should have, that we're seeking to live in repentance, dying to sin and living for Christ. We still struggle with sin, but we praise the Lord that there's one that we can go to to find restoration. 1 John 2, 1, the Apostle John says, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. That's our goal, that we live lives of holiness to bring glory to God. He says, but if anyone does sin, I'm glad he said that because I still struggle with sin. Do you? If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hey, I want you to know something. Because Jesus is righteous, you are righteous in Christ. You have a place at the table of God because of the person of Christ. And so let's seek to live to his glory. Seek to live for the one who has saved us and rejoice that, yes, we all still struggle with sin, but we are all saved and have a seat in the righteousness of Christ at the table of God. So, as we show up, it's an invitation to come personally, and we need clean hands. And as we come personally, we also need a good appetite. Good appetite. Growing up, I liked junk food a lot. Snickers and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and oh, Coca-Colas and Dr. Peppers and those kind of things. And, and the fact is, I still do. Now, I can't eat as much of them because... Well, it shows up a bit more than it did when I was a kid. But I can remember when it would be around dinner time, and I would go to the pantry wanting to grab a little Debbie's cake or something like that. My mom would look at me and said, you better put that down. You're going to what? And there you go. Y'all had to, y'all's mama was just like mine. You're going to spoil your appetite. For that candy. Don't spoil your, your appetite. Don't spoil your dinner. You know what, in the same way, we can spoil our appetite for God. And the things of, of, holy, the, the, of holiness, the things of God. What spoils an appetite? What kills our desire for God in our heart? Unconfessed sin does. And so when we come to the table, again, we need to recognize that we do not let, need to let sin pile up into our heart, creating distance between us and Him. But we want to pursue holiness. I mean... Uh, Matthew 5, 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Nothing worse than having a table fit for a king, not having the appetite to enjoy it. And so, we gain an appetite by, as we've already mentioned, coming clean, confessing sin, repenting. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so in, far from spoiling our appetite, we're called to do something else. That's work up an appetite. You ever worked up an appetite? I mean, to the point where you, you got to the table and you were hungry and you were ready to enjoy every morsel of everything that was on the table. That's what God wants. God wants us to work up an appetite for him so that we flee from sin and pursue the things of God. Listen to 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. This tells us a lot about how to work up an appetite. It says, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, 
and love and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. And when we do that, we're seeking to live a life of repentance and faith and pursuing the things of God. It's funny. The more, the per- the more we pursue God, the more we desire the things of God and consume the things of God, the more we want of God. Have you ever noticed that? It's kind of different from just eating at the table. At the table we go and we eat and we're, we're satisfied and we're full. Um, but there's this, this, this strange um, relationship with the more, the, more we desire, the more we consume of the things of God, the more that we desire the things of God, and the more God satisfies our desire, but then the more He satisfies our desire, the greater capacity for longing for Him grows. Do you notice that? So when God wants us to desire Him like that, to long for Him like that as we pursue Him through the things of God. So we need clean hands. We need to come with a good appetite. We also need to take plenty of time as we prepare to enjoy the Lord's table. I mean, a, a meal, a good meal, can never be truly rushed. You need to take some time. The supper of the Lord, we shouldn't rush into it and rush out of it. Any more than you would your Thanksgiving meal. You can't enjoy a lot. Think about all the time that gets put into preparing a Thanksgiving meal. Now think about the preparation it took to prepare for you the table of the Lord. What God did in sending his son born of a virgin as a baby, growing up, living a life, 33 years, living a perfect life, a righteous life on our behalf, going to the cross, enduring the wrath of God on sin, um, dying for sin, being resurrected and now sent to the right hand of the Father. He's coming for us. Think about what it took for Christ to prepare for us. we, We tend to treat God like we learn to eat at the table of our lunchroom at school. You remember the, the lunchroom at your, your school? I grew up in a, a, a Thorier public high school, so let's just say that um, lunches were lacking a bit. So no one really showed up at the table thinking, well, let's spend a lot of time to enjoy every morsel. It was like, I'm hungry, let's like eat if there's anything that's, that's edible here. And then you got 20 minutes, so you got 10 minutes to eat and 10 minutes to talk afterwards, and then you got to get back to class. And uh, it's insulting to the, the chef if you show up at a Thanksgiving table like that. Where you show up and go, what is, is there anything edible here? And then you shove down what you want and then you leave. That's not how you honor the ones who prepared the meal. The way you honor the ones who prepared the meal, the meal is sh- you show up with a big appetite, having nothing but time to eat and enjoy and to relish the goodness of what's been prepared and the kindness of those who did the preparing. That's how we show up at the table of God. Psalm 34, 8, the psalmist calls us, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So take time to prepare yourself for worship. Take time during the day in the word of God. Don't give yourself, all right, i got ten minutes to do my devotion, so let, let me hurry up and get... Don't do that. Set some unrestrained time, unhurried time to just sit with God. Open up the Word of God. Read until your heart's satisfied. Pray for the things that, that are burdening your heart. Do business with God. Enjoy the goodness of God. That's what we do as we prepare, prepare ourselves. We... We, take, we realize we're taking time, and as a family, as we gather together, as we take time, we're preparing ourselves to set as a family around the table of grace. What are we doing in all of this as we have clean hands and a good appetite and take time? We're, we're preparing, we're examining. Paul tells us to examine our hearts in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So as we come personally, we look in. Have I done business with God? 
you think right now? Did you show up today with clean hands? Are you just dealing with unconfessed sin? You hadn't done business with God. Or maybe right now, just in your own heart, say, God, I got some things I need to do business with. I got some issues I need to work out with you. I got some things I need to ask for forgiveness for. Maybe I got some people I need to talk to. And you make a decision, you're going to do that right now. Clean hands. Make commitment to the Lord. I'm going to spend some time with you this week. I'm going to enjoy the goodness of God this week. Come personally. Next and quickly, not only is it an invitation to come personally, it's an invitation to come collectively. When we come to the Lord's table, we come as the family of God. Um, One of the things that has grown to bother me over the years and certainly has bothered my wife from as early as I have known her is when we go into a restaurant and you see somebody eating alone. Don't you hate that? Just something about a meal that calls us to fellowship, to eat together. You go in and you see maybe a senior adult who's lost a spouse and they're there by themselves and your heart just breaks and we, you, know, try and you invite them over, come, come eat with us or can we eat with you because we're, we're, we're not made to be isolated people, especially as Christians. As Christians, there is no such thing as a long ranger Christian. God, when he saves us, he puts us as part of the family, he puts us as part of the church. And therefore, our lives are merged together in faith. If you look in Acts 2, verses 41 through 47, you see this. See, see the fellowship and the, the, the intertwining of faith and life in the early church. He says, So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves, themselves, together to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. They ate together. They observed the the Lord's Supper together. They prayed for each other. And it says, and because of that, awe and awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were what? Were together and had all things in common. What were they doing? Well, they were selling possessions and belongings, distributing them uh, to the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, worshiping together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I want to tell you something about the early church. That's not communism. That's community. It's fellowship. It's oneness. They shared each other's belongings because they were willing to give and care for each other's need. What a heart. What a picture of the benefits of the gospel in community. So we come personally to the table of God. We come collectively to the table to God. It's also quickly an invitation to come expectantly. So we come with much expectation to the Lord's table. We're coming ready to feed our bodies. <laughs> you know, we're so consumed with, with, with food, I guess, certainly here in, in the South. Um, we eat breakfast. What well, am I going to for breakfast? You get breakfast. And it's almost as soon as you get done with breakfast, you're thinking about lunch. Hey, where do you want to go to lunch? Well, and then you go, oh, you get, eat lunch. And like, it's not 30 minutes after lunch. Well, what are you thinking about supper? Right? Are, are we like that? And so God desires to be that desirable to us. That's a parallel. It's an analogy. Even more desirable than that. We are to, God says we are to be consumed with God like that. Matthew 4.4, 4, it says, but he answered, it is written, this is Jesus quoting Old Testament, man shall not live by, the bread, by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Oh, I just want more of God. What verse have you read today that just that, that has consumed you? What's God teaching you that, that you're longing to share with somebody? You know, what are you reading that is drawing you even more into his grace? John 6, 35, Jesus talks about being the bread of life. He says, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And so as we gather around the Lord's table, we're here expecting God to bring a blessing. 
You know, there's another element of this to us. Is, is that yes, we're expecting Jesus to bring us a blessing, but we're also longing for Jesus and the fact that he's not, he's here in spirit, but the Bible says he's coming in person as well. So there's some aspect of the Lord Jesus that comes expecting, longing for Jesus to return. It says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, as Paul teaches on the Lord's Supper, he says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To look forward to his coming as well. And then finally, it is an invitation to come gratefully. All right, you just finished that good meal around the table. It's everything that you ever could have imagined and more. What do you do? You know, push your chair back from the table. May loosen your belt just a little bit. Maybe a shirt button or two. I tell you what you better do. You better kiss your mama. You better kiss your grandmother. You better say, thank you. When we're around the table of grace, it's a place to say, thank you. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you, God, for not leaving me in my sin. Thank you, Jesus, for your life, your death, your resurrection, the fact you're coming again. Thank you that in a life of suffering, we grieve, but not as those without hope. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24, Jesus says this. As he prepared the Passover, the Lord's Supper with his disciples, he said, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we thank the Lord at the table this morning for the kind goodness of the gospel. May we prepare our hearts now. We're going to uh, sing a a hymn of invitation. And, uh, of course, the, the Lord's Supper is for all those who are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, having followed in believers' baptism. And maybe you're here today and you go, you know what, I've never trusted in the Lord. I've not repented and believed upon him, but I would like to. I want to be a part of the family. I want to be forgiven. I want that hope. I want the goodness of God as seen in the gospel symbolized in the Lord's Supper. I'm going to be here. I would love to receive you and pray for you and get you started on that that walk. What's involved in that is just repentance. You just cry out to the Lord. You don't have to rely on me to, to be there with you. You can do it right now, even in your heart. Lord, I need to be forgiven. Forgive me of my sin. I'm trusting by faith in you alone to save me. Save me. I'm trusting and finding I want eternal life in in you. I'd love to meet with you and pray with you now. So let's stand as we sing our hymn of invitation. You come as the Lord leads you. I once was lost in darkest night. Yet thought I knew the way, the sin that promised joy in life had led me to the grave. I had no hope that you would own a rebel to your will, and if you had not loved. As I ran my hellbound race, indifferent to the cause, you looked upon my helpless state and led me to the cross. And I beheld God's love displayed, you suffered. Rand!
ransom life in any way you choose and let my song forever be my only boast is you oh hallelujah all i have is christ hallelujah jesus is my life hallelujah God's people said, Amen. Please be seated as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. Our, our uh, deacons are coming now, those who have been uh, selected to be a part of this. Deacons are coming. Um, they're going to sit down here on the front rows, right here and over here. As I mentioned to you earlier, if you're a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've fallen in believer's baptism, you're trusting in Him alone for salvation, then we invite you to join the table with us today.
would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we're thankful to have a seat at the table. We're thankful for the life of Christ that was given for us. For the blood that was spilled. For the sin that was, that was forgiven. And the life that is given forevermore. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he th took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, as we remember, as we leave this place, may the bread and the juice, which now becomes a part of us, just be a symbol and a guiding reminder that Christ is an enduring part of us and he is remaking us into his image. May we leave this place to your glory. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us on this, on this very special day. Um, we've got a lot planned for this evening as we kick off VBS. I want you to come back and be a part of that. Um, I'm going to have Brother Josh close us here in prayer in just a moment. But before, before we go, I've got something to mention to you that I, that's important. So y'all settle down just a bit. Um, I want us to pray. Before we leave, I'm going to have Brother Josh lead us in, in this prayer for the Holloway family. They're going through a tremendous amount. Um, I'm not going to get all the details, but uh, Brother Buster uh, is incurring some, some very serious health uh, problems, and uh, he's in the hospital now, and so we're praying for him. And also, I got word that this, this morning that uh, Buster and Carrie's mother, Miss Rachel, passed away this morning. And so we want to be in prayer for them as they have a lot going on. But as we are reminded, as the Lord's Supper shows us, reminds us of the gospel, that we grieve, but not with those without hope. We have an abiding, abiding, enduring hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and what, we, what he will accomplish for them and for all of us, either on this side of eternity or on the other side. Thank you again for your fellowship and worship this morning. Um, and as Brother Josh prays, I'll just remind you that we leave this place. We're not dismissed, but we are sent. We have the gospel. Let's go change the world. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our time together this morning. Thank you for the gospel that brings us and unites us together, that we might celebrate it as a church, as individuals, as families. Uh, we thank you for that. Uh, Father, we, as, as we know, uh, as we do life together, uh, Father, we experience trials and we experience death. And Father, we know there's a family in our church that's hurting uh, right now. We, we pray that you would be with Carrie and um, all of the Baggett family and the Holloway family right now as they're experiencing this loss and uh, some other sickness. Uh, Father, so many questions, I'm sure, but Father, I pray that in a, in a, in a special and unique way that you would touch their, their family, that you would give them peace, that you would give them understanding, and that they would look to you, uh, Father, and they would know that you are in in control and that all of these things are happening uh, for for you to receive glory that they might uh, be strengthened during this time uh, father we pray that you would be with our entire church family as we leave this place as we prepare to come back and be together tonight for a fun time as we kick off uh, vbs we pray for a fruitful week that gospel seeds will be planted in the lives of each of these children and even their parents and adults that might be affected and, and connected with us as we as we uh, meet these uh, these families this week, Father. We pray for opportunities to share the gospel, and that you would work in a mighty way. And we ask this in Jesus' name, Amen.